Mama's in the kitchen cooking dinner real nice A beef stew, lomi, salmon and ice We eat a drink, we sing all day Kani Kapila in a water wine way Breakfast with Bob Chi. Macho man, welcome to day five. The big race day is tomorrow. We are brought to you by Hoka One One Polar. Halo Neuroscience, Velo Fix Today's Plan, Norma Tech, Four Seasons, Hawala Life, Triathlete Magazine. We're here. Beautiful. Huggles on the rocks. Our next guest, two-time Ironman world champion. Please give it up for Mr. Luke Van Lena. How are you doing, Luke? Uh, very good. Thanks, Bob. So we were talking about the, the fact that when you first came over here, it's not like you went and qualified somewhere. Nope. You, you were identified. I think you had just, did you win Nice? Yes. You had won Nice, and they invited you over here in 96. Yep. And you had never run a marathon. Nope. Never did an Ironman. Nope. What, what was this experience like for you? Well, now after winning Nice and yeah. uh, breaking Mark Allen's record, course record down there with about four or five minutes, um, at those days I was, I was sponsored by the same sponsor as Ironman was sponsored by. Oh, so which company? It was Nike. Okay. So they, they could give a, a push to give me a wild card to be, yes. able to, to be at the start here. So uh, you see the small things in life can change. They can. And uh, so I came here to do my first Ironman uh, and having the first marathon. And I came here, I mean... I know in the States they didn't know me that well, but in Europe they, they really know me right. because of what I did uh, in Europe. I didn't race outside of Europe in those days. And I came here to get a top five, maybe to get on the podium, uh, just because of the experience that I didn't have. Nice was in those days a three-quarter distance, was a 4K swim, 120 bike and 32K run. And, but yeah, I always say that for me, 96 was a, uh, I was a bit lucky maybe because uh, the island was very kind to us. Uh, yes. There was no wind was clouded, was a little bit rain, a little bit rain on the, on the, on the run. So that, that makes a big difference. So you, you never know what would have happened if it would, it would have been a... Your a typical day. Typical day in Hawaii, maybe I wouldn't have finished then. I remember talking to you after that win, and Luke, ran, the first time out, even with a penalty, ran 241 and broke, broke the course record on that, his first time out. So we were talking afterwards, and I said, well, you know, how was the wind? And you're like, well, I'm from Belgium. There's a lot of wind in Belgium, and this, you know, this was no worse than anything I've been dealing with in Belgium. Right. And then the following year, yes. <laughs> at 97. Ooh, yeah. Well, 97, I didn't participate. Oh, it's 98. I, I had, a, yes. had an injury, and but in 98, yes. uh, when Peter won uh, his his first time, that was tough conditions. That was the that was when the wind really. Yes, that's we, when we, you found out what this place is all yeah, about. This is what it's all about. I know people have to follow a certain path yes. to get the first win here. I did follow that path, but it came afterwards for me. Right. And how did it change things for you? Because you were one of those guys, <clears throat> when you did well at the IT World Championships, all of a sudden, a lot more pressure, a lot of sponsors, mm -hmm. and then you had a number of years where you were injured. Yes. yes. And then you, then the Nice, then you do well at Nice, mm -hmm. and then you win this race. Yes. Again, a lot, more, a lot more pressure. How yes. did that winning this race change things for you in Belgium? Because you were the really... At that point, the first, the first European, European to yes. win here. Yes. Well, it, the, the sport in Belgium came, uh, came popular in the er early 80s, of course. Yeah. Um, and then a few people started to do triathlon. A few people came to here. And early 90s, we had some uh, good athletes in, uh, in Belgium. But uh, after winning this race here, uh, if you're winning the Ironman of Hawaii, becoming the world champion, uh, this changes the sport in your country completely. And uh, some countries ask me, some people in Holland and, and in France, uh, I mean, okay, in France it's really big, but I like in Holland. If you can get a world champion in Hawaii, you will see the sport develop huge in your country. And that's what happened in the, in the 90s when I won Hawaii. In Belgium, it got more and more popular, and we have so many athletes doing triathlon at the moment. And then we have also a lot of athletes com from Belgium competing this year. In, How uh, many Belgian top pros do you have? Uh, here I have three pros. Yes. Um, I have uh, Romain Guillaume. He won Ironman Malaysia okay. uh, last year. Then I have uh, Bart Arnouts. He won Ironman Hamburg. And it's always top ten here. Yeah. And then of course uh, I have Frederick van Leerde since I have I've been coaching Frederick since 2011, and uh, he is still there. So uh, and 2013 he's 2000 world champion. World champion, and, and he won these this year, and yes. he's uh, he's in the good shape. So uh, I'm looking forward to the race tomorrow. How have you changed his training based on one, the fact that he's getting a little older, 
and but he's still racing at a very high level. Yes. And wh what are you w doing with him to keep him at that high level? Well, you, you cannot. Well, there are different ways to Kona, of course. And uh, we, we some years we, we choose a different way. And uh, after last year, we've decided to to go back to old school. So uh, in our days, we raced until o October, and then the, f the next race was April May. Right. And uh, we did. We had a normal winter. Uh, now this season of triathlon is 12 months in a year all right. over the world so we decided to take a winter rest like we used to do in in, in the 90s and uh, that that gave him the, the the peace that he needed and and focus back on on, on the sport and uh, going back on altitude training and uh, especially altitude in combination with a big race like this so uh, Frederick just came back from altitude so uh, uh, and altitude works for him. So uh, going back to the things that worked in the past, putting all those things together, and this is what we did this year. We had a, we did a photo shoot with you and Peter Reed, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and th th you guys had a number of races where you win, he's second, he uh, wins, you're yeah, second. Yes. You had some good battles with Peter Reed. Yeah, uh, good battles, good friend, friends. Uh, every time when we meet each other, it, we always we didn't always speak English. It was French because he's 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 pretty good in French also. Yes. So, but I remember that day it was San Diego in the early 2000, I think. Yeah. Cool Hand Luke, Pistol Pete, was it? Huh? Cool Hand Luke and Pistol Pete. Yes, that was uh, that was really fun. Uh, and when you look back at that second win, did it mean more than the first win? To do it again? Well, I, I am a very. Um, not 100% conf confident in my condition always. I was right. very critical on myself. But I remember there's only one race throughout my whole career. Before the start, I knew I was going to win. And that only happened once in my life. And that was in, in 99 when I won for the, for the second time. And uh, I, I could control that race from start to finish. And uh, I didn't panic. And uh, the race went perfect for me. So, uh, so yes, th th there's a difference between 96 and 99, of course. And then you went 7.50, 27 and 97, the fastest ever Ironman up until that point. Yes. Uh, you, you really had just ma some really, really major wins, and then you had a lot of injuries yes. throughout your career. Looking back on it, how would you do things differently? And it seems like you've kept, Frederick has stayed so injury free that you mm. learned from yes. maybe some of your mistakes yes. that to, to really help Frederick out. Well, the, the injuries are not so much mistakes. I, I was just, um, I was fragile for injuries. Right. That, that's who Just I am. Your body. Yeah. I, uh, I used to be in the national swim team, the Belgium national swim team. I was national champion two, three times. And I swam an, until I was 19, 20 years old. And then I only started triathlon. So I had a very fragile body of swimming about 60, 80 kilometers uh, a week until I was 20 years old. Then moving to, to triathlon. I uh, raced my first world championships, uh, then was Olympic distance in Orlando in 1990. I was 20, 21 years old. I came fourth, first, yes. first not Australian because the podium right. was filled up with Australians. Yeah. First European being fourth at that age. I mean, the pressure phew, was there. And then you, you want to train more. harder and yeah. more and then you force your body too much. And uh, that was a mistake that I made in those days. And if I would go back in time, I would give my body a little bit more time to get used right. to the, the, the pressure that you give it in the sport. There were a number of years here where you, know, hit, you had to drop out of the race. And when your family's watching this race mm. back home, it's the middle of the night. Yes. And I think it was 2000, 2007. Yeah. You came back here and your son Andrew, who I saw the other day, he's 25 now. Yeah, he is. But he was a little boy. Yes. And he said, Daddy, please finish. Yes. And, uh, and I did finish. I came eight that year. Yes, you did. And uh, it was a very close, tight race. Top 10 was very close. And I, I finished that race and I was pretty happy with my eight place. And uh, my son, yeah, he's for the first time he's here on the islands coming to see this race. And, uh, and he's 25 now. So uh, sometimes you need somebody at home you, you want to race for. And finishing that race that year might have been as, as special as any of your wins. Yes, because I had, um, like I said, I had some injuries in the past, uh, had, some, um, had some mechanical problems right. here on race day. So, uh, like I said, I did the path that others did before. Maybe they win. Uh, so it, it's always nice when you finish your career to have a, a, a nice result here. And for me, that uh, was like making closure right. to this race, to be no, I'm that age at the end of my career, and I'm still top 10 here in Hawaii. And that made me a really happy triathlete. Love it. How about a round of applause? Two-time Ironman world champion, Mr. Luke Van Lida. We clean
and grandma gotta work hard. You know my tutu like the boy real sour. I love my tutu every minute of the hour. Breakfast with Bob. Oh.